Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the detailed view command found within an Autodesk Inventor drawing file. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, I encourage you to check out the other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody. So here we are in our drawing file. And the first thing I went ahead and did was I used the base view command to drop this base view in the center of the sheet. And then I went ahead and projected some additional views off of that base view. And the objective for this particular video is I want to use the detail view command to pick up this raised lettering in the center of this cover. Okay, so I wanna pick up the company logo here and just show some additional detail without having to enlarge this particular projected view. So the first thing we wanna to do to create this detail view is go up to the top here under the create section of the ribbon and click on detail. Okay, and as you can see here, the command is highlighted. That means it's currently active. So what we need to do now is click on our view of interest in which we wanna pull this detail view off of. We'll go ahead and left click on this top view. And once we've done that, the detail view command window pops up and it's got some information in here and uh, various options that we can utilize. But first, let's go ahead and drop our detail view just to see what happens with the default settings. So what we'll do is we'll hover our mouse cursor over our area of interest. In this case, I want it to be on the company logo here. I'm just going to left click once. And once I do that, I can move the mouse cursor away from that initial point that I've dropped and it will increase or decrease the size of this shape here. So let's go ahead and just get it as close as possible, but also leaving a little bit of headroom. So that looks good there. So we'll just left click and now we can move our mouse to an empty spot on our drawing sheet and then left click once again. And once I do that, you can see we have our detailed view. And of course, we can change the size of it and all sorts of other things, which I'll go over in just a moment. But that is in general, how you create a detail view. Now let's take a look at the various options we have available to us because we can do all sorts of um, customizing with this particular command. Now I'm back in my command window. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, we have our view scale label section. Now within this section, we can control the labeling of the detail view itself. So let's go ahead and start with the view identifier box. Whatever is found inside of this box will be the label for our detail view. OK, so currently you see there's a letter A there and I get a preview here. It says uh, A. So this would be detail A. OK, but if we typed in a letter C, for example, and we drop this down into our drawing space and drop the detail view here, you can see it's labeled as detail C. OK, so now let's go ahead and take a couple steps back and take a look at the next option. Moving to the right, we have our scale field. So within this field, we can designate the scale of our detail view by either typing a number in. So we could type in four to one, for example. We can open up this drop down menu and select a preset scale that's listed down here in the bottom, or we can use a recent scale that we've typed in previously. Let's go ahead and select a five to one scale and then drop this detail view off to the left here. And as you can see, it is scaled to five to one and that's listed here in the text identifier for this detail view. Moving down into the left, we have our toggle label visibility button. OK, so this option allows us to either show or hide the detail view labeling. Now, currently it's enabled, and I know that because the light bulb is illuminated. But if I were to toggle this off and then drop this detail view, you would see that there's no identification information listed underneath as before. OK, so if we were to go in and do another detail view just somewhere else in this view, and leave that activated or leave that light bulb illuminated, we can drop this detail view, drop it here. And as you can see, we have our identification information listed at the bottom. Moving to the right, we have our edit view label button. When we click on this button, we open our format text window. Now within this window, we can type whatever text we want. We can change the justification or formatting of our text. And then we can also add elements that are known as properties. Okay, so the text that's highlighted here, these are known as properties. Now, properties essentially just automate the labeling process for your detail view because here, as you can see in the top left hand corner, we have the word detail. 
this is just plain text. So it's going to read as detail within the label underneath the uh, detail view. OK, but if you move to the right, this view property is going to take a look at whatever's typed in this view identifier box. OK, so we have a letter A in there. So this will read detail A. OK, so it'll be the letter A in this space. And then down here we have scale. So again, this is just plain text. And then moving over to this scale property, this will look at whatever scale is set in the scale field. OK, so this will read detail A because it'll pull the A from here and then uh, it'll read scale two to one. OK, because this information is being inserted in this spot here where the scale property resides. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can add more of these properties. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll hit enter on the keyboard just to move down a line. And then if we come up to this drop down menu here, okay, so it's on the left, you can see we have view label properties, okay, that's where these reside. So if you open up this drop down menu, you have access to all kinds of different properties, okay, so we can pull properties from our model and those include the appearance, the designer of the model, and so on and so forth. But let's say, for example, we just want to insert another view label property. Let's just put the scale again in this third line that we're creating. So we'll change this drop down menu to scale. OK, and now you want to click on this button here that says add text parameter. OK, so that's this button with the little X in the down facing arrow. Once we click that, it'll insert that property there. So what we can expect to see when we execute this command is it'll say detail A scale two to one, and then you'll see two to one again on the bottom line just for illustrative purposes. So we'll go ahead and click OK here, and then we'll go ahead and just drop this view real quick. All right. And so when we zoom in on this, you can see it says detail A scale two to one and then two to one once again, because I put an additional scale uh, property at the bottom. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our style section. So within the style section, we have three main options. Our first option allows us to see hidden lines. The second option removes the hidden lines from the view. And the third option allows us to either shade or unshade the view. So in the top right hand corner of the sheet, this isometric view is a shaded view, whereas all these other views are unshaded. So let's go ahead and check out the hidden line option. So we'll go ahead and enable that by clicking on it. We'll drop the detail view like so and drop it here in the top left hand corner. And as you can see, I have a bunch of dashed lines running around this detail view. These are details that are hidden underneath this cover surface. OK, so normally you would not be able to see these details, but with hidden lines shown, we can actually pick up on details that would be normally hidden from a particular perspective. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our hidden line removed option. So as you can see here, I have it pre-selected and I'll drop the view just as I did before over here in the top left hand corner. So when I do that, as you can see, we no longer see those hidden lines. OK, so this is what you would normally see from this particular perspective. You wouldn't see those features that are hidden underneath this cover. So let's go ahead and take another step back. We'll go to detail. OK. And now let's take a look at shaded. OK, so let's enable this option. <clears throat> now, something I want to point out is that you can either shade a view with the hidden lines removed or you can shade a view with hidden lines shown. OK, so you can sort of mix and match these options as needed. So we'll go ahead and show the hidden lines and shade the view. I'll go ahead and drop this as so and drop the view here. Now, as you can see, the view is shaded, but I can also see those hidden lines there. So that is your style section. Moving down, we have our fence shape selection. So currently we have circular selected, and that is just the shape of this boundary that we place onto our view to create the detail view. So let's go ahead and change our fence shape to rectangular by left clicking on this option. And as you can see, the boundary now changes to a rectangular profile. Now I can go ahead and create my detail view using that profile. So I'll just drop that there. And there you go. Now we have a rectangular detail view. Moving down, we can also select our cutout shape. OK, so this is the shape around the edges of the detail view itself. So, for example, we'll leave it on set as jagged. OK, so it sets the cut edges as jagged. So let's go ahead and just create a detail view here. That looks good. We'll drop it here. And this is what that setting does. It creates a jagged edge around the detail view. Now, let's take a look at what smooth looks like. So we'll go ahead and take a step back. We'll go to detail, select our view, and now we'll select set cut edges as smooth. All right. So when we do that and then drop this view, 
You see there, we have a smooth edge as opposed to the jagged edge as before. Moving to the right, we have these two additional options, but currently we can't access those. To access these, what you need to do is you need to set the cut edges as smooth, and then you can go ahead and utilize this first option. So this allows us to visualize the full detail boundary when we would not normally see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a detail view at this corner, just to show you what it looks like without this option enabled. So I'll go ahead and left click, and drop this view here. And as you can see, it only shows me the rounded edge where it cuts into the part itself. The rest of the circle is lost because it's off of the edge of the part. So let's go ahead and take a step back and see what the option enabled looks like. So we'll go ahead and drop that view in the same spot. We'll set that as smooth and we'll enable display full detail boundary. When we do that and drop this detail view, Notice how we can see the entire view definition boundary as opposed to only seeing this one rounded edge as before. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a step back and see what the second option there allows us to do. So we'll go ahead and go back to detail, select our view, we'll select the same corner, and now let's set this cut edge as smooth, we'll display the full detail boundary, and then now we can also display a connection line. So let's enable that and drop the view as before. And there we go. So we see the full detail view boundary in addition to this connection line that connects our detail view to the detail view definition found in the parent view that we've used for this detail view creation. Now, I'd like to point out that if you're using connection lines, you can add vertex points along that line so that you can control the shape of the line itself. To do that, all you need to do is right click on the line, go to add vertex, and then once the cursor changes to this plus sign, you can left click on the line um, wherever you wanna add that point. And then once you do that, you'll see we have our vertex point there. Now you can click and drag that point anywhere on your drawing sheet and it will change its shape. You can also add more vertex points to create even more control over that connection line. So let's do that. We'll right click on the line, go to add vertex, and then we'll add a second point here. And then now as we move that, we can create all sorts of crazy shapes with this connection line. To remove these points, all you have to do is right click on the point itself and then delete vertex, okay? And we can do that again for this other one, right click on that and go to delete vertex. Now, before I go ahead and wrap up this video, I wanna talk about how we can edit our detail views after we've already executed the command. So first off, what you can do is you can hover over the detail view itself. So you see this little boundary that pops up, this little square boundary. You can right click and then go to edit view. And within this window, we can change our style settings, our labeling, and so on and so forth. We can also access this menu by double clicking on the view itself. So when I hover over the view and that boundary pops up, I just double click left mouse and that window pops up. Next, let's go ahead and see how we can adjust the size and location of our detail view even after we've already executed the command. So to do that, all we need to do is hover over our view definition in the parent view and left click and hold on that center dot and then move it into position. Okay, so once we have it in position, I'll release the left mouse button. And as you can see there, it redraws the view automatically for me. And then let's go ahead and shrink down the boundary by clicking and dragging on one of the dots that sets on this line here. So we'll left click and hold and then move this uh, towards the center and then release left click. And then there we go. Now we've shrunk down the boundary and then we can always come back and change the scale of this by double clicking on the view. We can change this to a uh, five to one scale and click okay. And then there we go. Now we've edited our size, location, and our scale of our view all in one go after we've executed the command. We can also toggle the visibility of elements like the connection line, our full detail boundary, or the cutout shape without entering the command window altogether. To do that, all you have to do is hover over the connection line, this boundary here in your detail view, or the view definition in the parent view. So you see how all of this turns red? So we can right click and then go down to options. So we can toggle the smooth cutout shape. Okay, so we can toggle that on or off. Okay, so let's toggle that on. And then we can go down to full detail boundary. So we can see that full detail boundary. Let's move this back to the corner so you can better see that. So we see that full detail boundary on or off. Okay, and then we can also toggle the connection line from here. So we go to options and 
click on connection line and there we go now we can toggle that element on without having to go back and undo several steps to go back into this detail view and create it from scratch now let's see how we can prevent our detail view from moving around on the parent view all we need to do is right click on the view definition go down to attach and then hover over a point in the parent view. So you see these yellow dots that pop up. Okay, so these will act as our attachment vertex. So we'll left click on this one here. And then now when we go to move this view, it won't go anywhere. Okay, so you can see I'm pulling it down here, releasing the mouse, but it's not moving. To detach the detail view from the parent view, right click on the view definition once again, and then go to uh, detach. So when we left click on that, that point disappears. And now we can go ahead and move this around freely. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Drawing Creation Module, where I showed you how to use the Detail View command. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.